All right, Steve, are you ready to get started? Yes. Great. So thanks for joining us today, guys, for the Super Bowl LV media availability with Tampa Bay Buccaneers defensive lineman, Steve McClendon. To ask a question, please raise your hand. We'll start with Joshua Allen from Bucks Report. Hey, Steve, how are we doing? I'm good. How about yourself? I'm doing well. Just want to, uh, you know, you started the year with the Jets and then you got traded. You drove in your car from Miami, drove straight up to Tampa Bay. Mm-hmm. Uh, what what has your experience been like, and can you just kind of go through that journey? What was your first impressions of the team? Well, first and foremost, I, I mean, I didn't drive. <laughs> uh, it was a car waiting for me after the game to to bring me here to Tampa. Um, but my first impression on this team, it was a veteran team that that were building something really good here. Um, that they already had something good going on, um, and I just wanted to be a part of it. Uh, the biggest thing for me was just. I wanted to win the championship and when I, ha- I wanted to have an opportunity to win a championship. And when I found out about the trade, I was like, I most definitely have an opportunity to go play in the championship game. Next, we'll go to Patrick Freeman from 105.5 The Beat. Hey, Steve, how you doing? I'm well, about yourself? I'm very good. I just wanted to ask you how challenging uh, has it been for you this season under the pandemic circumstances and then to have an opportunity to play uh, probably in the biggest game of your life? Um, in the pandemic, it's we have to understand that through every circumstance and every situation that we have to be able to fight, uh, to overcome. Um, you have to do the necessary things to, to get through it. And I feel like we have done that, um, not just me, I think my teammates have done that. Um, our families have done that. Um, uh, the organization has done that. Uh, but at the end of the day, man, you know, we're going to continue to fight this nasty virus. But at the end of the day, we will still be able to go out and do something that we absolutely love and compete for a Super Bowl trophy. Next, we'll go to Christine Perez. Hi, Steve. You spent a lot of time with the Jets playing against Brady. What is it like to now have to have him as a teammate? Um, it's very amazing right? because once you see a guy like that come in day in and day out uh, with the mindset to just get better, get 1% better every single day, it, 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 it puts a mindset to you like if he can do it, why, why can't you push yourself even that much harder? Um, and he's he's an all around pro. He's a great guy. He's absolutely a Hall of Famer and and the waiting whenever he does uh, decide to hang it up. But man, the one thing just be able to see a guy of his caliber to come in every single day and just work his tail off um, and just try to get better. So it is it's just great. It's a great feeling to be here with him and uh, to be on the journey with this team as well. All right, next we have Liam Blackburn from Gridiron. Hey, Steve. Um, when you came into Tampa, Todd Bowles said he, he stood on the table for you and really wanted you to come over. Kind of what, what did that mean to you and what makes him so special? Obviously, you know him from the time, your, your time at the Jets. And, and do you think he can be a head coach in this league again? Uh, first and foremost, he's most definitely a head coach in waiting. Um, and he's a, absolutely a great man into my life, not just through football, but just in life in general. Um, when he, when I found out that he told me that he stood on the table for me, man, it, it was absolutely, I just wanted to let him know every single day I wouldn't let him down. Um, I absolutely appreciate him, um, as a coach, as a man, as a father, as a husband, everything that he stands for, I believe in as well. Um, and I'm just proud that, uh, he, he found it in me to bring it here, bring me here with him. And I really appreciate him and. Hopefully one day, and hope, hopefully one day soon, that we'll see him coaching, a, a, leading another team. All right. Does anyone else have questions at this time? If not, Steve, we'll just kind of hang out for. Okay. Looks like Liam has another question. Sorry, Steve. Yeah, I could just follow up on that. Um, obviously, from your time at the Jets, uh, Quinn and Williams had a bit of a, a breakout season this year. I just wondered how high you kind of thought his ceiling was, especially with Robert Sala coming in there as the head coach next season? Well, like me and Quinn are pretty close. Um, 
you know, both of those guys are from from Alabama. Uh, we didn't, I didn't play at the University of Alabama. He did, but just when he came in, he came in eager to learn, to know more about the game. And the one thing that I live by and I stand by and I stand firmly on, when I leave this game and when I leave this world, with all the knowledge I have attained, I can't take it with me. So why not give this gift away? And that's what I have been doing. I have been giving him this gift, giving him gems here, here and there. Everything that I had or learned over the way, uh, I would I would give it to him, not only him, but a lot of the other guys as well. But we're, in, we're talking about him in particular, man. I just told him, man, don't, don't get too caught up in all the noise. Be who you are. Be Quentin Williams. Don't be anybody else. Don't try to be Superman or a superhero. I mean, you know what, what, what you have done to get here. I said, keep doing that. Now it's time to take that to the next level. And there's always levels of everything. And, and you have to understand that. And that's what I told him. Just, just keep tapping into who Quentin, Quentin Williams is. Um, you're not anybody else. You are the Quentin Williams. And continue to do the things that helps you prepare, that helps you be a better man, helps you be a... A, a, a better teammate, um, and ultimately, the, the ultimate goal is to help you be a better football player. And I think he's doing those things very, very well. He trains hard. He works hard. A very smart and intelligent football player. Um, off the field, he's very smart as well. Uh, and I, I just, I love the young man. I love the young man, and and I love his his work ethic. I love his drive. Um, I love his focus. Um, and it's, it's bigger things to come for him. It's even bigger things to come for him. And for the head coach, he has to understand that. And you have some very great guys, uh, especially in that, that D-line room and the tight end room, the linebacker room, the DB room. Uh, you have a lot of guys that are eager to win and not just win. They want to compete for the championship. All right. Next, we'll go to Chris Franklin at NJ.com. Hey, Steve, thanks for taking the time to do this. Uh, just had a question. Uh, how would you describe your main time with the Jets, and how does it feel to be with the Buccaneers this season? I mean, my time with the uh, with the Jets was amazing, man. It, it, I always look look at it like this. God sent me places for a reason. I would never argue or complain about where he sent me. Um, sometimes our missions are different. Our journeys are different. Um he, he wanted to see, he was probably tested with patience. He was, he wanted to see how I would give my gift away. Um, and when I was in New York, I kept the exact same mindset that I have to this day. Since I was in Pittsburgh, I keep, I kept the exact same mindset. And that's just to have an opportunity to play in the Super Bowl, uh, to compete at a high level for, uh, for the championship. Um, and when I came here, uh, Looking at these guys, these guys were eager. They're, we have more veterans here, and they're eager to win. They're eager to win now. They're eager to win the championship as well. And they put the necessary time in, on and off the field. Um, the bond, the culture here is just unmatched. It's a bunch of brothers playing the game together. All right, next we'll go to Rob. Oh, hi. Um, thank you very much for taking my question. My name is Rob, and congratulations on making the Super Bowl. I want to ask you um, a somewhat non-serious question. Um, if the Buccaneers allowed you, would you consider riding your bicycle to Super Bowl Sunday because of, like, home field advantage, and you might be your Super Bowl, like, like moment? Okay, thank you. Um, I don't own a bicycle, uh, but if I did and they would allow me to ride it, um, just to be able to enjoy it with the family and fans and friends as well, I most definitely probably would ride a bike just so just so I can see everybody and see how exciting there is, especially through this pandemic. I would love to just to continue to see the smile that we put on people's faces, man. And it's, to me, it's absolutely amazing to be able to see people smile through all of everything that we have been through. All right, next we'll go to Nora Printiati from The Ringer. Hey, thanks for taking the time to do this. Um, so I have a question sort of about the Chiefs offense, but a little bit uh, from the perspective of a defender. They've been really good at converting third and longs, like 10 plus yards to go. Is there something that 
kind of, you know, putting it bluntly stinks as the defender about giving one of those up and just feels like a gut punch if you maybe felt like you're about to get off the field? To be honest, and we understand it's a National Football League, people are going to make plays. We understand what type of team we're playing. They're very dynamic at quarterback, um, they at, at tight end and at receiver, at running back, um, offensive lineman. They're, they're a talented team. We understand that. But at the end of the day, it's about us. It's, it's, a, so, it's singly focused on us, executing our game plan, um, doing the things that we have been coached to do these past two weeks, um, and just make sure that we do those things. As long as we stay focused and understand, we stay driven, and we understand that there's only one life today, and we only have this day to live for this day and this moment only, then I think we'll be fine. Um, and play fast, play hard, play smart. And we continue to play together. Um, the old saying of a coach used to tell me, he said, big man running, little man hitting. So all we have to do is do those things and we'll be fine. All right, next we'll go to Kelly Hallinan. Hey, Steve. Um, I was just wondering, what is it like to go from a team that was in the midst of a bad season, like the Jets, to go into the Super Bowl now with the Bucks? Like I said in the beginning, my mindset never changed. Um, I screenshotted a picture in the beginning of the year and a Zoom call with with the New York Jets. And I remember I remember one of our receiver coaches he posted the picture and it had the 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 trophy with the Bucks flag in front of it. And in the top right corner, it was the picture of the stadium and the ship um, and everything. And I screenshot it and I saved it. Um, I'm a big vision guy and I saved and I looked at it. I looked at it often. Then I, then as the season started in New York, I wasn't really looking at it. And um, I just stayed focused on tasks. I would continue to motivate the guys. I would continue to push the guys. I would continue to encourage the guys, no matter what the scoreboard said, no matter what happened, I would always come in with the same mindset of getting better each single, each day. And I, I think that's what, for me, I never deterred away from the the one common goal. What made me, what made what made me want to just continue to just play hard is because I knew I wanted to play in a championship. Not just me. I knew other guys wanted it as well. But you had to stay focused. I had and I had I had to stay driven and understand that, understanding that I if I do those things, it'll work out in my favor. And going into into the playing the Dolphins, and when I found out about the news. I was just like, well, I'll, I'll focus on that when I finish my task here. And I finished my task there. And when I when I really got in that car and headed this way, I understood that I had an opportunity. And that's all you could ever ask for. And, and, and I don't look at the Jets season as a as a bad season. And so I don't look at it as wins and losses sometimes. I, I look at losses as learning experience. What did I learn from it? What did I learn from it? Because in, in order to lose something, you have to grow from it to get better. And, and that's how I always looked at it. And when you win, find the things and the find two things that some things that we might have missed or they might have missed that we can still correct. So I always look at it as get 1% better each day. And I don't look at the Jets season as bad. It's just something that we all can learn from. And I, I, I look at our season now as books as we have an opportunity to correct, uh, correct things we have an opportunity to play and make history in our home stadium. So all we have to do is just stay focused, stay driven, and understand we have one life to live. All right, next we'll go to Alex Lace. Hey. Oops, sorry. Steve, can you hear me? Yes. I didn't know if I got cut off there. Sorry about that. Yeah, I host a show called First Class Fatherhood. It focuses on fatherhood and family life. I got three and a girl myself here. Uh, so I was curious for you, uh, what was the transition like for you going from being a dad of boys to having a, a girl and being a girl dad? And what do you enjoy most about being a dad? Uh, man, I'd say one thing. The boys teach you how to be strong. Um, you have to have that tough love. You still have to love on them, but they just they have you with this tough love. Um, you have to you have to build them and mold them. Then when you have that daughter, she has she helps you understand so much more. Like I grew up with, I have all sisters, but my daughter is basically like me. I have three sisters, and, uh, and I'm the only boy. And my daughter has three boys I and mean, three brothers. 
and um, she's the only girl. So for me, it helped me understand even more by having a daughter, how to really cherish a woman, how to really love a woman, because I understand that. I mean, I respect women to the utmost because of my mother and all my sisters and my aunties, but it was just different. It was a different feel um, when, when I had my daughter. I, she, she put everything in perspective for me. Um, anything that I have ever done, ever done negatively, um, she made me realize that I can't do those things. I can't say certain things uh, because she's watching. I have to move a certain way. Things that I could say to the boys, I can't say to my daughter. Um, I understand that my daughter is watching just as well as my boys. I, I, I can have tough love with her, but my tough love has to be different with her. Um, but the, like I said, at the end of the day, I, I look at this. One thing, I love my kids. I love my family. Um, but the daughter just, she does something to your heart that's so much different than the guy, the boys. Um, my, and I love my boys to death, but my boys, I feel like I have to be tough. And with my daughter, she makes me like real mushy. Well said. You're a first class father all the way. Good luck on Sunday. Hey, man, I really appreciate that. All right. Does anyone else have questions at the moment? Please raise your hand. All right, Steve, we'll give it a few minutes. Just hang out if someone else pops in. The availability goes to 2.30, so just hang out for the moment. All right.
Steve, we'll give it a few more minutes and then we'll let you go early. How's that? Good? Right. Cool. All right, does anyone else have questions at this time? All right, looks like we have one coming in from Kevin Larney. Hey, how's it going, Rakeem? Uh, Kevin Larney here from Wild Chat Sports. Uh, you know, it's probably been just a crazy ride for you and, and for you now, you, you know, you're at the Super Bowl. Um, you were actually drafted by the Chiefs. Um, would you ever have imagined that? Hey, wrong guy. I wasn't drafted. I was undrafted. Did you ever imagine like you'd be in this position regardless? I mean, even more incredible. I mean, you, you defeated the odds. Um, you know, what, what's that like, man? I think you're in the wrong um, yeah. session, Kevin. Oh, okay. Come on. All right, we'll just move on. Let's go to Joe Ellis at Sideline Sports Network. How's it going? Good. So a lot of, uh, good. So a lot of guys aren't giving your defense enough credit in Tampa. You know, your defense has done really well this year and carried the team when the offense has struggled. Um, you know, how does it feel going up against the Chiefs, which is the number one offense in the league, knowing that you guys haven't gotten the credit you deserve? But I, I really don't focus on that on any of that. All thing we only thing we're we're focusing on is going out there playing all three phases um, very well to the best of our ability, um, and focusing on us. Um, and if you get caught up in the things that about not getting recognized, then you're losing focus of what what the real prize is. And I don't want to lose focus of that. And I don't think any of the other guys are looking at losing focus of that as well. This is a team sport that play with with all of us, with 11 men on the field at a time. And for us, we just we just glad to have the opportunity to go out and compete and and just to showcase who we are and what we can do and what we can accomplish. And just a quick follow-up. Um, how do you guys plan on neutralizing the Chiefs' speed from the defensive standpoint? Uh, just executing the game plan. That's our biggest thing. What the coaches have put in, we just feel like if we execute the game plan to the best of our ability, and I, I really, really believe that we'll be fine. Um, and the biggest thing, when you when you have a team that – when you're facing a team like Kansas City, you really just have to hone in on all the detailed things. You have to hone in on all your technique. Um, you have to remember and trust the process in the beginning of – 
the alignment, you and your assignment, then your technique. And if you do do those three things, you'll you'll be you'll be successful. But that's the biggest thing, just staying focused and living in the moment and trusting trusting your eyes, trusting your technique, and just playing your game. Thank you, man. Best of luck to you on Sunday. Yeah, I appreciate it. All right. Any other questions at this time? All right, Steve, we'll let you go early. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. You too.